So I actually started my zoo career as a teenager at the Potawatomi Zoo. I was a junior educator, which are teen volunteers, and I helped with zoo camp over the summer. Um, But after that one experience, I was completely hooked and came home and told my parents, I'm working in a zoo, and just kind of took off from there. Yeah, and I think for me, I I was born and raised on a farm out in Missouri, and uh, my family was very... um, supportive of my love of animals. So from a very young age, I had everything you could imagine. I had things that a kid should have never owned, I won't even say. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I worked with the local conservation department, so when they would confiscate stuff, I mean, I had deer, I had foxes, I had a bear for a while, crazy stuff that I don't support and should, kids should never have. But anyways, it was a great experience, but it, it, it really instilled that passion for animals. You know, there's nothing better uh, than seeing an animal, being able to touch an animal. You know, Sky with her education department, she's able to take these ambassador animals out and let a kid have a connection with an animal. So what I mean by an ambassador animal is an animal that we can handle, that I can take out, let a kid get up close to, let them experience it, perhaps touch it. Um, but we've just found through studies that, you know, it's one thing to see an animal in an exhibit, but if you can get up close and have a personal experience with an animal, you're gonna walk away with a much different perception of that animal and appreciation. Getting that up close personal connection, it's so important. We've had kids that come into the classroom completely terrified of snakes. And by the end of it, you know, they're touching the snake, they are asking questions, they wanna know more. Um, And so just learning a little bit about animals, especially if it's an animal that you're maybe not the fondest of, um, they're important too. I did have one kid that was terrified of snakes. And um, we talked about, it was specifically a Wilma python, and they are endangered. Talked about why they're endangered and how we can help protect them. And by the end of the class, he said, I'm still afraid, but it's an endangered animal, and I'm going to be okay. I think I'm going to touch it. And so he came up and touched the snake. And that really, you know, gave my heart a little tinge because it really spoke to him, getting to learn about more about that animal, even though he was a little afraid of it. You know, I think living in this technological world that we live in right now, kids are further and further away from nature. We, they're on their phones, they're not going out into nature. You know, zoos are one of the last places where you can actually get out of the house, come and see nature, and actually learn about these animals. And I think that's why also we have such an important role. And and, and it is to educate people. Like I said, they'll be the person that will say, you know, the snow leopard um, at the Potawatomi Zoo. I notice it's always alone. It's really sad. Well, if you le- if you learn about snow leopards, they're actually a very solitary animal, and it would be very difficult to put another cat with that animal. It actually would be very stressful for that animal to have another leopard with it. And for a lot of these animals, if it wasn't for zoos, they'd be completely extinct in the wild. Wild. You know, for instance, we have amur leopards. There's only about 100 left in the wild right now, and we have a pair of them. We were absolutely astonished that we had a good pair, and they were able to, we were able to, our female got pregnant, um, and it was amazing. We were going to have amur leopard kittens uh, at the Potawatomi Zoo, and in the wild, a female and a male amur leopard would stay with mom for about a year, and then year, year two, probably two years, and then once they would start reaching sexual maturity, they're going to break away, um, and they're going to go to another territory in the wild. So what happens in a zoo setting is we can hold these offspring for a certain amount period of time, but with, if we start letting them get too much older, mom will start fighting with the daughter. So that's where that whole education then comes in again, because a lot of people will be like, oh, you tore the baby away from its mom. No, mom would actually probably at some point, they're gonna fight and they're gonna not be together. It's very different than humans, you know? Uh, so it's essential that we have to separate them. I think there's just a lot of misunderstandings about zoos out there.